got some really exciting news. We have recently had Golden Lion Tamarin babies born, some twins. We've got a male and a female, and they're both doing really, really well. We supplement feeding them every two hours. It's a lot of work, but it's incredibly rewarding. Just doing the 4 p.m. feed for the Golden Lion Tamarins, and I've got all my set up here, which is a lot of stuff. I'm just gonna get all the milk prepared and to the right temperature, and then I'll get the tamarins out of the incubator and give them a feed. Frida and Alonso are our adult gone line tamarins, and we knew this was coming. We knew that Frida was about to pop, because she was absolutely massive, and we've been monitoring it very closely for a long time. And she did really well for a couple of days, but it became obvious very quickly that the babies weren't getting any milk, um, and that Frida didn't really have any milk to feed them, and we could see them getting weaker and um, starting to slide down her body, which is a really key indicator um, that they aren't doing that well. We did as much as we could to give Frida the best chance of being a mother. And unfortunately, despite everything we tried, it just wasn't meant to be. So we made the really difficult decision um, to pull them for hand rearing. And so for the last week or so, we've been feeding round the clock, getting these babies through this critical time period. Right, so that is at 38 degrees, which is good. 0.95, so tiny, tiny, tiny amount. Who's first? <laughs> It's a race. It's a little lady. Are you ready? Okay. Oh, you're so hungry. Hand rearing can be a bit of a tricky thing, particularly with primate species. It can result in some behavioural issues further down the track when they're adults, where they don't know if they identify with humans or with their own kind. But it's been done with tamarins, so we've, we've got a lot of research and a lot of information at our disposal to help us do the very best job that we can. There's actually quite a lot of crossover um, between having a human baby and having a golden line tamarind. For example, to try and get the little lady to poo, we're trying different things like abdominal massage, and so far it actually seems to be helping. So yeah, it's bringing back a lot of um, skills <laughs> that I thought I had long put to bed. <laughs> and now it's your turn. So this is the little male, and we can tell quickly that he's a male because we've just put a little bit of blue nail polish just on his fur there, so we can quickly know which one's which? Golden lion tamarins are critically endangered, so it's really important that um, we do as much as we can to try and make sure that we have healthy, successful individuals that can then go on and contribute to um, the breeding program, either within the region or internationally. You're pretty sleepy now, aren't you? <laughs> it's the biggest feed you've had. So for the next week or so, um, we'll continue with the two hourly feeds, and then gradually as they start to put on a bit more weight, then we can start to lengthen the time in between feeds. And pretty quickly after that, it'll become, you know, no more feeds overnight. So I'm looking forward to that day. <laughs>today we're very excited because we get to drop a feed and that feed happens to be the 2am which is the killer <laughs> we're really thrilled that we've got them to the point now where their weight increase is tracking in the right direction and so they can now afford to drop a feed at night and then hopefully from here on in it just gets better and better and we get to drop the 4am in a couple of days so by the end of this week we'll just be feeding 6am to midnight all right who's first where are you oh, squeakies I'll take you first, little lady. Let go of your brother. We're using what we call a surrogate mum at the moment. Even though we're providing all the care, um, we limit our interaction with them, and so the majority of their time they're spending with their either their red panda mum or their meerkat mum. Um, they actually outgrew their meerkat pretty quickly, so the red panda's working out really, really well. Are you hungry? So after every feed we have to stimulate them to wee and to poo, which is exactly what their parents would be doing. They can't do it on their own just yet, they're too little, but as they begin to develop and get a bit stronger then they will start to do it on their own. Hi, there's my little friend. Here we go little wean, here we go. From here they're going to start to develop really quite rapidly, so by about 12 weeks they'll be fully weaned, so we've really only got a few more weeks until they'll be um, almost independent and won't need us anymore, which is actually a good thing. In the next two to three weeks we're going to start introducing solids and the interaction that they have with their parents, which is going to be a really big, a big step forward. Oh, 
it was good. It was a good feed. They have um, started to put on the weight that we've really wanted to see over the last couple of days. So very happy about that and we're celebrating that because it's been a long 17 days. <laughs> How did you get up there, you silly girl? So it's been four weeks now um, and they've made a whole lot of progress. All of a sudden they've just become these mobile, independent little mini versions of the adults. So it's been pretty rewarding over the last few weeks just to see that growth and that development. And getting them onto solids has been um, a really big tick as well. Can you go there? And that's your one. Come on, we've got yummy mango today. Feeding time is a bit of a debacle at the moment, so this is how I imagine parents of twin toddlers to be 100% of the time. And feeding can take an hour just to get three grams into them. Come on. <laughs> God. You guys. He's here. You he guys. Good boy. There's no one method that works and every feed changes, <laughs> so it's been um, challenging and frustrating at times, but also rewarding because they are slowly getting better. And we want them to be back with Frida and Alonzo as soon as possible, but we can't do that until they're weaned. So you can have this one. And so this week has been a real crucial week for trying to really cut down the number of feeds that we were doing and reduce the amount of milk that they were getting. Right, so that's another feed done and then they um, go back into what we call a satellite. And so the idea with this is that it just starts to prepare them for moving into this environment with their parents and the parents can get a little bit closer to them and interact with them when we're not around. Um, and so far, so good, it's working really well. And as soon as they're big, um, big enough and actually weaned um, onto solid food full time, then we'll just be able to open that door um, and they'll go back with their parents. Everybody on board the panda? Here you go. See you soon. Hello, Primate team. We're going to let the GLTs outside now. Ready when you are. I'm really excited. You can hear them. Oh, here we go. Hello. Hey, buddy. <laughs> it's a bit daunting coming out for. Um, what probably feels like the first time in a very long time. Plus he's got his kids to worry about now and he's being such an amazing dad that um, he's probably gone back in to kind of get them or to reassure them. But they'll come out when they're ready. Oh. Yeah, now you're out. Can you call them? So the family have been together for eight days now. The babies were living within their little satellite home that was inside the parents' night rooms. And all we did one day was just kind of open the door and leave them to it. And they figured it out themselves. Um, Alonzo was the first one straight over coming in to check that they were okay. And it was all just really relaxed and calm and they were feeding together. He's been so attentive and so encouraging. So it's been so amazing to see him come out of his shell and he was made to be a dad and he's doing all the right things. The decision to hand rear is never an easy one. There's always the risk that they imprint really heavily on the keepers, but because there were twins, that made it more likely that we would be successful. We made sure that we had all the latest research and science available to us, having the support of the lead team at Auckland Zoo as well, and all of that has made this a real success. Godline tamarins still only exist in less than 5% of their original habitat, so they're still very, very restricted and very threatened by habitat loss, but there are incredible conservation programs that are protecting that habitat and that are closely monitoring the population. So it just feels like we're part of that bigger picture, particularly since we've had this success, and not a lot of places can say that they've hand-read Godline tamarins successfully. We are now able to contribute to the international pool of knowledge and experience for this particular species. So we feel very proud of that. 
The plan from here is we are now hands off, we can walk away from this knowing that we've got this amazing little family unit of four Golden Lion Tamarins and for the first week or so we'll just let them choose whether or not they want to be inside or outside until they gain their confidence and then gradually every day they'll be outside exploring their environment and hanging out in the tree like they are now. So we'll just be here to provide the very best care possible.